Across the Fence, the remarkable story of Vermont's elusive architect. We're going to learn about George H. Guernsey's and his lasting legacy in communities across Vermont. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. George H. Guernsey passed away more than a century ago, but his work can still be seen all around our state. Guernsey was a well-known architect in the 1800s, but the depths of his contributions might have gone unnoticed were it not for the work of two members of the Bethel Historical Society. Janet Burnham and Heidi Nicolaitis spent nearly a decade researching Guernsey's life and work, and the result is a beautiful book with full-color photographs of Guernsey's work all around the state. Welcome to both of you. It is really a terrific book. I mean, beautiful photographs, places that people are very familiar with and see and go by, but maybe don't even realize the story behind all these buildings. So Hadi, why don't you start out talking about who was George Guernsey and why a whole book about him? Well, we got interested when about 10 years ago, the Bethel, uh, town of Bethel <clears throat> was talking about renovating the town hall. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to try to see who designed it. And there was some question about who the architect actually was. Uh, started doing a little research and then we found out just by chance that um, he had also designed the school building at the Vermont Law School, mm -hmm. which was in the next town. Right. And uh, the uh, researcher had uh, found out uh, quite a bit about him already and uh, gave us sort of a head start on what George Guernsey had done. <clears throat> and we took it from there. So we decided to put together a little booklet and in the process actually ended up with a book because we found so much more. And so were you surprised at what you found, Janet? Very definitely. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we hadn't expected was to find that he'd been all over the state uh, building. Of course, it took us quite a long while to come to that conclusion, but um, he'd been all over the state. There were more than 40 buildings that we, that we know of. There are probably more. Mm -hmm. And uh, before so we knew it, we had a whole book. That's great. So let's take a look, at perhaps, at some of the, the pictures now. We, you talked about the town hall. And what are we looking at here? This is the, uh, the main building of the Vermont Law School. Mm -hmm. And it was built as the center of town school, the graded school in the high school, back in about 1895 or 1892, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then we have another picture, too, of, of the Wood School in Bradford. Uh, the, yeah, and it just has the tower on the opposite end, plus the uh, building material is brick on this one. But uh, I believe, from what we looked at, that the Wood School copied the Vermont Law School building. Uh, they were both done about the same time. Mm -hmm. But I think the Wood School probably looked at the pictures that were done about the law school and said, oh, we like that. So mm -hmm. they went with it, too. Now, yeah. he didn't, he died when he was 60. Yes, he did, from TB. Yeah, and tell me a little bit about some of his personal history. Uh, he was born in East Callis, Vermont. He's a Vermont bred, born and bred boy. His dad was a master carpenter, and by the age of eight, he was carrying pegs up the ladder to, when his dad was building the East Callis Chapel. And, um, got interested in it from a very early age. I don't think, we don't think that he had any professional training other than under his father. Mm. Uh, just went on from there. And so, actually, the research that you did about the building in your own town led to another building and then another building. Is that kind of how it sort of kept going? You kept finding these n nuggets and tidbits about buildings that he was involved we found in? found some of the things in the strangest places, like uh, <laughs> one of the churches. In fact, it's pictured on the front uh, cover there mm -hmm. in East Orange. Uh, we had it on a calendar, and uh, we had been looking for a picture of that church. And one day, uh, I just looked up, and here I had it hanging in my house. I said, oh, my goodness, that's, <laughs> that's it. That was right there. <laughs> right, right in front, front of us. Of Let's talk about, too, some of the other buildings. Um, he built his own house, of course, in Montpelier, and we have right. a picture of that. Yes, that's, that's his house. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, one of obviously many that, that he designed. And you, you said that Guernsey was well known in Vermont. Um, was it his work? He was also very um, prominent in Montpelier. He was actually the third mayor of Montpelier. And that's why he got the nickname George the Third. He was the third George. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, are all these, and then he also did a bunch of churches as well. Yeah, at least uh, 18 that we know of. Mm -hmm. 
and there are several that he supposedly designed, but they weren't finished until after his death. So there were some modifications made to the plans. Mm -hmm. So we're not really sure how much of the actual original plan that he designed were followed, you know, in the final. Uh, yeah, okay. th this is Notre Dame de Victories in St. Johnsbury, and. Uh, it's my favorite, I think, of all his churches. It no longer stands. It was born, uh, burned uh, in 1966 by an altar boy who was angry at the priest. Oh, my goodness. And he started it with a candle. Oh, my. And, uh, and so, so we have another picture, too, coming up. Right. Next picture. I just think it's beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. This is another St. John's Mary Church. Now, Lambert Packard was a, a favorite of... Uh, Fairbanks, who was, of mm -hmm. course, St. John's Berry. Uh, but here, George Guernsey was on his, his uh, in his area, so to speak. Mm -hmm. This is the Free Will Baptist Church. It's now a Christian school. After it was built, it burned, I think it was in 1875, mm -hmm. and they rebuilt it using Burnham's original uh, plans. So it's still a Burnham church, a Burnham. Guernsey Church, sorry. And I guess there are a couple of other churches um, that burned as well. I guess there's a, the Universalist Church in St. Albans, and then the First Congregational Church in Hyde Park as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. But um, and then we have another picture, too, of a, the Baptist Church in Ludlow. Yeah, that's the Baptist Church in Ludlow. Um, and so look at, the, I mean, it's very interesting. They're almost turrets. He liked turrets or <laughs> towers or whatever <laughs> you'd like to call them. That was a favorite of his. Uh, you can look at the church in uh, Mount Pelier, which is St. Augustine, and it doesn't have the towers, but the towers were taken down because they were uh, dangerous. Um, because were, you explained to me earlier they were built from wood. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And so let's take a look at another picture here. That's the East Orange Church. Mm -hmm. And it's probably one of the only churches that still has its horse sheds, if you see out back there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I didn't even notice most, that. Most churches would have had them, you know, back in the time when these churches were built in the late 1800s. Uh, but this one still has theirs. Excellent. And what's the next picture we have? And this is the, uh, I think it's Baptist Church mm -hmm. in, in, Barrie. in Barrie. And the first Boy Scout troop in America started here in 1909. My goodness. Yeah. That's really amazing. And then we have another Catholic church. That's St. Augustine in Mount Pelier. Mm -hmm. um, as you see, the, there are no towers on it, but there should have been. Because he didn't build squat buildings. He built buildings that rose to the heavens. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed that's um, a stone building. Mm -hmm. Is that typical of, of his medium? Some of them were. Mm -hmm. Some of them were. And does well, it all depend on what the, uh, the community wanted at the time? I was going to say, the St. Augustine and the St. Mary's in Middlebury were two of the ones that he had designed, but uh, those were built a couple years after his death. Mm -hmm. So they're slightly different. They're modified plans from his original design. Yeah, that's St. Mary's. And mm -hmm. that's why they don't have those big towers. You oh, know. interesting. The original picture we saw was uh, much more ornate. Mm -hmm. so, and they also enlarged it, I believe, because the original plan was for a smaller building. The, um, both of those churches ran out of money after they they began, you know, with their hiring an architect. And uh, a matter of fact, St. Mary's in Middlebury started the walls. And they said it looked more like a ruin for about 13 years until they got enough money together to finish it. Interesting. And this is St. Charles in, in Bellows Falls. He designed not only the church, but also the building you see on the right, mm -hmm. which is the, I used to call it the parsonage, uh, which is a copy of a house in Randolph. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah. what else besides churches did Guernsey design? Uh, well, there are several business blocks. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of them downtown Montpelier. And uh, uh, many of those were built right after a big fire uh, in Montpelier. And uh, some of them are totally different from what was there before. And a few, like the Union Block, has also since burned and was rebuilt, not by Georgia's standard. Mm -hmm. So there's one of them. That's, mm -hmm. that's the Blanchard Block. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Blanchard Block <coughs> was interesting because it had a big opera house in it. 
that supposedly seated 800 people. Now tell me a little bit about that because that's somewhat unusual. That's a lot of people that's from Montpelier. An enormous number of people. They uh, ran special trains and also there was a trolley that ran from Barrie to Montpelier and they gave special uh, dispensation to people who wanted to go to the Blanchard Opera House. What happened was that Montpelier is on the, was on the road between uh, Montreal and Boston. So a lot of traveling opera companies and musical companies were going back and forth between Boston and Montreal. They'd stop in, Mont in Montpelier, rather, and put Wonderful. on a show, too. Sometimes they had as many as three different shows in a week. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So they did really fill it up. And what happened was, after about 25 years of wonderful housefuls of people, um, movies came in <laughs> and people started spending their entertainment money on movies rather than uh, going to an actual show. Amazing history that these buildings yeah. have seen. Yeah, and they turned the opera house into business blocks and apartments, mm -hmm. business uh, offices rather. And now which one is this? That's is that the Walton Block, that's perhaps? That's the Walton Block, And yeah. that's in Montpelier. That's the Walton Block. It's the one in the middle. Mm -hmm. And he also, I guess, designed private homes as well? I guess if you had enough money to hire an architect for a big house? Yeah, the, uh, well, now there, that was a private home, and this is in Montpelier. Uh, it was built in, uh, immediately across the street from the Capitol. They moved it in about 1940 to build the Vermont, uh, state of Vermont, what do you call office it? Building. Office building. Office yeah. building. Um, moved it on a flat car, railroad flat car. They said they only broke one window. <laughs> and you look at this building, you say, and it's brick. Yeah. And you think, oh my goodness, they moved that whole thing, but they did. And the Secretary of State is in there. <clears throat> the Secretary of State is in there now. But that used to be a private home. Yep. yep. Wow, that's amazing. Um, did uh, he design any other special private homes? Yeah. Oh, well, the Redstone, Redstone, I think, is probably right. the most uh, impressive one up on the hill. That has quite a history because it was built, uh, designed like a German hunting lodge. And the, the owners uh, were quite interesting too. I think Janet probably can add to that. <laughs> well, it was uh, the Burgesses. And actually, her maiden name was Jewett, and her father gave them the property to build because he was a Mount Pelier businessman. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fellow she married set up the first uh, political science course. He wrote the first political science course in America. Uh, helped Columbia College become Columbia University in New York City. Wow. He taught the uh, Kaiser Wilhelm's youngest son in Germany. Uh, they were, you know, movers and shakers, jet setters before there were jet setters. Incredible. And um, she was a uh, gifted artist. She has a painting, at least one painting, in the Smithsonian. Wow. Uh, they had one child who I guess they sort of spoiled. <laughs> and uh, when he, he married a, a local girl, which was sort of beneath him, or be this, this according to the family. And when he left her, they took care of the son, but they didn't do anything about the local girl and the child that she'd had. Oh my goodness. And then when his mother died, and I think it was 1936 or seven, something like that, and she had a procession up Fifth Avenue in New York for her funeral procession. The police stopped the funeral procession to arrest her son because for non-payment to his second wife. Wow. So. <laughs> That's quite, you were just re researching a building and they found yeah, right. all this. Well, you know, we're historians and, and it couldn't pass up some of these wonderful stories. That's great. And so now the, the state owns the Redstone Building. Yes. And so how many buildings did he eventually design, do you know? Well, we know of over 40 yeah. that are sure. Mm -hmm. And we suspect that there's probably a lot out there that we don't know. And this is where we're hoping that some folks might uh, have some information and, you know, contact might us. Know. Yeah. And so his name was George H. Gurney. What does the H stand for? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't Never discovered did. that yet. We also dabble in genealogy mm -hmm. and have looked into family history. And so far, I haven't found a clue of what it might be. So we're still looking for that too. So maybe someone will, will be watching this and know That's what that right. is. Know <laughs> no, immediately maybe. Yeah. Well, as I said in the beginning, it is really a beautiful book. It's called Vermont's Elusive Architect and it's the story in full color of George H. Guernsey. To purchase the book, contact the Bethel Historical Society. Their website is listed on your screen. It is BethelVermont.com. I want to thank you both for joining me. Great stories.
Thank you. That's our program Thank for today. You. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.